Welcome back to Introduction to Computer Science at SSFS. In this video, we're going to take a look at something called sprites. And a sprite is kind of a, a video game term that's a holdover from the olden days. And a sprite just refers to usually any moving character on a screen. And Pygame has um, ways to implement sprites, which makes animating a group of things very, very easy. So on this first screen, we have a class that I've created that's going to be a block class. In the last video, we just created a single file that made a block and made it bounce around the screen. You notice there's a couple different things in this class file. And the first thing that's different is usually we just write the class, the title, and the colon. But this I have in parentheses, pygame.sprite.sprite. What that means is our block class is a subclass of this sprite class. That's a very important concept in object-oriented programming and one of the things that makes it so powerful. Our block class, because it's a subclass, anything that it's in the sprite class that can do, our block can do. So instead of us having to rewrite all the code for a different sprite every time we want to make our own sprite, we just make a subclass of it. We can say that our block class inherits from our sprite from the sprite class. And inheritance again is an important concept in object-oriented programming. So our block class can do anything a sprite class can do, plus anything else we want to add to it. Um, it's a very flexible concept. So you can see this is a standard uh, init method. I'm taking screen, which is the uh, main surface, uh, color of a block, the width of a block, and the height of a block. This first line is very important. This line actually initializes, in the same way we had to do um, pygame.init uh, to initialize a lot of the pygame methods, we have to do the same thing for the sprite class. Um, but since our class is a subclass of sprite, we can say that sprite is a superclass of our block class. So I'm calling the initialization method on our superclass, which is the sprite class. I could have written this all out, but it's actually easier to just write super. Um, a lot of this other you've seen before, um, I'm making a new Pygame surface, um, just like we did with the block in the last video. I'm filling it with whatever color the user chooses. Um, they're giving me screen dimensions here. Uh, I get the rect uh, based on the size of the block they send. And the other thing that's, one thing that's different here is instead of hard coding the speeds to f like five or three, I'm actually giving them random uh, numbers. So I made x between one and ten and y between one and five. And that way when I have a large no amount of objects moving on the screen, they're not all going the same speed. So it just makes it a little more interesting. And then next I have an update method. And uh, remember we said that in, when we animate, we fill the screen, we move things, we draw them, and then we display them. So this is the part that's actually doing the moving piece, the updating piece. Uh, you can see I'm just moving the left and the top by the x and y values respectively, and then I'm checking to see if uh, they bounce along the boundaries. Notice that this area is a little bit different. Surfaces have a method called getWidth that returns how wide they are. Since screen is a surface that's being passed, um, it makes this method a lot more flexible because this can be used on whatever size screen I get past, not just 500 or 400. Uh, so it can be very, very flexible. So I'm getting the width of the screen and saying if it's bigger than that, reverse direction. And then zero is obviously, zero is always going to be the top uh, of the screen. And you can see I'm doing the same thing for the y direction. I'm checking to make sure that the bottom of the block doesn't go off the screen or the height of the screen and I make sure that the top of it doesn't ever go below zero. If it does, I just change the direction of the of the y speed so that it kind of bounces off. So that's our basic block sprite class. Let's look at the file that's actually going to use that class. You can see at the top it's just the same imports we've seen before. Um, I'm importing my block class and I'm going to import the random module because I'll use that in a few minutes. I'm just going to hide that. Um, I initialize Pygame, and then I have some constants. And 
Remember, constants are variables whose values don't change. And by convention, they're always written in all caps. And while my game is running, the screen width and screen height shouldn't change. They're constants. And the same with my block width and height. And then I'm going to create my main game window, my main surface. I'm using the screen height, screen width and screen height constant variables and the 0 and 32 as you've seen before. I set a caption. And then one thing that's new is I make uh, what's called a sprite group. And a sprite group is, as the name implies, a group of sprites. And it lets us do two pretty cool things. The first is uh, I can do certain methods on the entire group of sprites with one command rather than looping over it one by one. And that's pretty useful. And the second thing is I can use the sprite groups to de detect collisions between sprites. And we'll learn about that in the next video. This for loop is actually the main loop where I'm going to create my different sprites. And so you can see doing for x in range 10, I'm going to make 10 different sprites. It'd be very easy to do 20, 50, or 2. And one thing I'm doing here, which is not needed, um, but it's kind of fun, is I'm setting random values for the red, green, and blue of the color so that my sprites start out different colors, and then every time I run this program, there'll be different colors. And then here's the command that actually instantiates a new block or a new block object. And you can see I'm passing it my main surface so that the class can get the screen width and height here. I'm passing it the color that I've made and the width and height that I want my block to be. And the next thing I do is I'm taking that block and I'm taking the start, I'm, I'm going to set the starting x and y values. And what I'm doing is I'm setting it to the screen width minus the block width. You might think you might want to pick a random value anywhere on the screen so that I could just use screen width or screen height. But what happens if I do that, there's a chance that the block could end up half on the screen and half off. And that can cause animation problems, as we'll probably see later. And the last thing I do is I add each one of those blocks to my block group. So when this is done, I should have 10 blocks all with a different random color and all starting at random locations on the screen and a group filled with each of those 10 blocks. So down here is my while true loop which we've seen before and this is all the same and then again remember our animation loop is fill the screen, move the shapes, redraw the shapes and then update the display. So again I'm going to fill the main surface with with white I'm going to call this update method on the blocks group. So with one line of code, I'm going to move all my blocks. No matter where they are, it moves them. Let's go back to the, our class. It's going to call this update method, and it's going to move them, whatever the speed of x is and the speed of y that I determined in my class. Note that update is a method of the sprite class, and Normally it doesn't do anything, so you, in order to use it, you actually have to define it in your class. Okay, so once I update it, that means everything moves. Again, with this draw method, it redraws everything to the surface. So again, one command, I'm drawing everything onto my main surface, and then I update the window. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I hope this works. Oops, sorry. I ran the wrong program. Let's do move blocks. And there we go. I've got 10 different colored blocks moving around. They're bouncing merrily off the sides of the screen. But the only problem is they're moving through each other. Again, it looks kind of cool, but it's not very realistic because you know, if we, were, if we were making a pool simulation or a billiard simulation, it doesn't make sense for balls to move through each other. It's not that kind of reality. So uh, we need to do one thing to fix that, and we'll do that in the next video.